Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam and you're watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies and today I want to tell you about all the new stuff Netflix is adding in February 2020. So if you're new here, this list is going to cover new things that Netflix is adding. That's new Netflix originals, new release movies, as well as some older stuff that is new to the platform. I'm going to list all of it. It's going to be about 30 movies, TV shows, and specials. First, I'm going to go through everything getting added on the first, and then I'm going to tell you about all the new stuff that's getting added throughout the month. And before moving on, this video is sponsored by CyberGhost VPN. In the middle of the video, I'm going to tell you how they can help you watch even more movies with your current Netflix subscription. On the first, they're adding a ton of stuff, but I'll be brief because a lot of it is stuff you have seen, including Back to the Future Part 3, easily the weakest Back to the Future movie, but still pretty damn good, mainly because mixing a time-traveling DeLorean and horses is pretty badass. Blade Runner, the final cut. Contrary to popular belief, the director's cut of Blade Runner is not the official director's cut because Ridley Scott did not have full control. The final cut, he has full control. There's some changes, some added scenes. So it is the representation of the vision that he had for Blade Runner. So if you've never seen it, it's a good place to start. And if you want to explore it more, there are multiple versions of Blade Runner that you can dive into. The Dirty Dozen is a really great flick from 67 with stars like Charles Bronson, Ernest Borgnine, Lee Marvin, and it's kind of like Inglorious Bastards. Obviously it's not as edgy, but still a group of badass guys just sent in to kill Nazis. It's really cool stuff and a really great movie. Even if you don't watch older movies for some weird reason, this would be a great one to check out during the month of February. Another dirty movie is Dirty Harry. Hopefully you've seen this one. It's a classic for a reason. Another one, definitely take time to watch it if you've never seen this gym. Driving Miss Daisy gets added, which I have mixed feelings about. While it did win an Academy Award for Best Picture, it also had some really weird, stereotypically racist stuff in it. It's kind of now famous for a display of how the Academy was sort of blind to some racist stuff. It's a good movie, but it carries a little bit of baggage with it. Uh, still worth watching, just I think with the right lens. They're also adding Elizabeth and Elizabeth the Golden Age, two really kind of beautiful, amazing movies about Queen Elizabeth. Hancock, one of the last Will Smith movies that I really enjoyed. This one's fun. I didn't think it was a great movie, but it's a fun concept and I really enjoy sort of this drunkard superhero that's just kind of almost wreaking more havoc than the villains in the movie. Charlie Theron plays a good villain and, you know, Will Smith is good here, but he was on his way out and he's sort of playing like a lot of supporting roles. And when he's not, he's in sort of box office failures. This was sort of his, his last win with just Will at the helm. The Notebook, I gotta mention it because for some reason everybody loves that movie. While I'm not hating on it, it's inexplicably popular considering how mediocre it is. It's been considered the Olive Garden of movies uh, and I 100% agree with that. The Other Guys is a pretty funny Will Ferrell movie. If you got tired of Will Ferrell movies before this one came out, this one actually surprised me. It's, it's got some great moments. Mark Wahlberg's funny in it, but even funnier than that is The Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, sort of this competing team of cops and it just makes fun of cop movies. We just talked about Dirty Harry. This movie makes fun of stereotypical sort of cop movies like that. The Pianist, another big Oscar winner. Really fantastic movie about the Holocaust and the thing that makes this one so fantastic opposed to other ones is it's got a different point of view. You're really with a guy played by Adrian Brody who is hiding out during the Holocaust. So it's just another perspective on it. He won for best actor and it really is a really beautiful, great movie. It's very heavy, so be sure you're in the right mood when you watch this one. And then we go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum from The Pianist with Police Academy 1 through 7. I don't quite want to say if you've seen one Police Academy, you've seen them all, but I will say if you've seen one and you didn't like it or don't remember it, you probably don't want to bother with all seven. However, if you do love that brand of humor, you can watch two different Police Academy movies every week in the month of February. Purple Rain also gets added. Oddly enough, I went with a purple theme today. Did not do that intentionally, but if you want to watch Prince's Purple Rain, maybe you've never seen it, could potentially make a really great Valentine's Day watch if you're in the mood for it, because Netflix isn't adding a whole lot to choose from in that category. 
And then finally we end February 1st with Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. That is not all of the older stuff that they're adding, but it's the bulk of it. And then most of the rest of the month is gonna pepper in some new stuff, including one show I am super excited about. Before getting to that, let me tell you about the sponsor of the show, CyberGhost VPN. They make a fantastic sponsor for this show because a bunch of you have signed up. I'm getting good feedback. It's a VPN service. You've probably been hearing about them. It keeps your web browsing secure. And they do all sorts of great stuff, including 24 seven customer support, a 45 day money back guarantee. If you don't like it, just let them know and they will refund your money. So it's risk free. You can use it on up to seven devices at once. You can use it on Android, Mac, Linux. Like if you can name it, they're probably compatible with it and you can use it in a ton of different countries, which is perfect because it allows you to access Netflix in different countries, which means if you're in the UK, if you're in Australia and you wanna watch the movies that I'm talking about in this video, sign up for CyberGhost, try it out. You'll be able to access the movies I'm talking about. If you're in the US and maybe this is an older video and you wanna access these movies because they're no longer on Netflix, you can probably find them available in another country with your CyberGhost account. Not to mention the fact that other countries just have a different variety of movies, so you can get a lot more out of your Netflix account with CyberGhost VPN. All right, moving on with the month on February 4th, Tom Papa, You're Doing Great is a new comedy special. I like Tom Papa, I think he's fun. He's got this really sort of light, affable sense of humor. It's not necessarily family friendly, but it's also not really hard and edgy either. He's just really funny and he really crafts his jokes well. I'm not gonna compare him to Jerry Seinfeld, but I think fans of Jerry Seinfeld will also like Tom Papa. On the fifth, we get a new crime series called The Pharmacist. It's four episodes long, and I have really been digging the crime things that Netflix has been putting out. I liked the Aaron Hernandez one enough. It informed me on a lot of stuff that I didn't know because I didn't keep up with that case. And it was fairly well put together, but a little bit dry. And in the previous month, Don't Fuck With Cats is one of the better crime things I've seen in a while. And I like that they're kind of short and sweet. Four episodes is great. It doesn't bog me down too much. And I can keep watching movies to tell you about on Netflix. On the seventh, I've got a couple of things for different audiences. One of them is The Ballad of Lefty Brown. This is a Western starring Bill Pullman and it's only a few years old and it's good, it's gritty. It's kind of a low budget thing. Don't expect too much. I mean, this isn't Tombstone, but if you love Westerns, this one's well worth a watch. If you typically don't watch them, I don't know that this is gonna be the one to sort of dive head first into, but if you love Westerns, you're probably not going to love Horse Girl, which is the other Netflix original getting added on the fifth. This one's actually directed by the same director as Life After Beth, which was number 20 on my Hidden Gems list just last week. I'll put a link to that video in the description. That was a weird, quirky movie. I don't know too much about Horse Girl, but it looks interesting. Alison Brie stars in it and some other cast members I'm familiar with. It looks kind of odd and interesting. I'll be checking it out if it sounds a little more interesting than it does right now. I may even do a full review on it here on the channel. And then there's a new series called Lock and Key. It's like fantasy, mystery kind of stuff. It looks like it's not my cup of tea, but it does look pretty cool. And it looks like it's probably one of those shows people are gonna be talking about. So if it does look like you, you're gonna to wanna to make a note to watch it on the 7th. Keep in mind, all of these dates are subject to change, but on the 9th, they're gonna release Better Call Saul season four. So if you're a cord cutter like me and most of the Flick Connection viewers, be sure to mark that date so you can catch up on that show. And then again, other side of the spectrum on the same date, Captain Underpants, Choice Orama. This is one of those things they've been releasing for kids and families where you make decisions with your controller during the event. And it's maybe like 10, 15 minutes, or at least that's what they have been. Really fun to watch those with young kids and help them make the decisions. There's not a lot to it, but it's still a fun activity that lets you engage with your kids more than just sort of putting them in front of the TV. Now, February 11th adds Good Time, which is actually done from the same director as Uncut Gems, which everybody was talking about this holiday season. And Uncut Gems is available on Netflix in some countries if you have a CyberGhost VPN account. 
But because I guess they have that deal with Uncut Gems, they also have the director's other movie, Good Time, which stars Robert Pattinson. This one's great. I've talked about it a lot on the show because it's been on Amazon Prime for well over a year. It's a crazy wild movie. Robert Pattinson's trying to get his brother out of jail. There's a Sprite bottle full of acid that sort of kind of keeps making the rounds. I mean, pure liquid LSD. And the movie is that crazy. It's colorful. It's wild. It's got this electronic soundtrack. Really cool vibe on this one. If you like the movie Drive. This is a cool flick to watch, but it is an indie flick. It goes in a direction that you're probably not used to seeing in, in big Hollywood movies. I personally like that. Some people don't. I happen to know that a lot of you did dig this movie though. On the 13th, Narcos Mexico season two. That's a mouthful, but looks badass. Unfortunately, I fell out of the show, not because I didn't love it, but because I watched so many movies to keep up with this channel. Uh, I was a big fan of Narcos though, and if you're still into it, still watching it, get ready for season two of the Mexico part of the series. Then on the 14th, Valentine's Day, they're adding Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon. Now, it's because by the time Valentine's Day rolls around, it's too late to be adding Valentine's Day movies. But this is a Netflix original movie, and I actually love these Shaun the Sheep movies. This is done by the Ardman Animation Studio. I love everything that they put out. I liked watching these before I had kids, but they're even more fun to watch now because they're great filmmakers. Not only are they great storytellers, but they piece together action sequences better than most big budget action movies. Yeah, they're not full of explosions and stuff, but the way they're edited together and how smartly they're crafted, really great stuff. So I'll be watching this one with the kids, maybe on Valentine's Day. February 15th brings Starship Troopers, the original. This is a kind of a must watch. Even if you end up not liking it, it's one of those movies most people have seen. Everyone has an opinion about it, so you should watch it. And it's great for the uninitiated is it's like a sci-fi B movie. There's insect type aliens and they're going to war with them and it's pretty wild and epic, but it also has these really great undertones about like fascism and stuff. And it's just really kind of pulpy and very, very self-aware, which it gets super high points with me for that. Girl on the Third Floor is a fairly recent release horror movie that I'm interested to see. I have not seen it yet. It does look interesting. It doesn't look great, but it certainly looks like it's worth a watch for me. If I like it, it will likely make a list coming up in the future. And for my wrestling fans, you may already be aware, but CM Punk stars in this and he's renovating a house and it's haunted and you know, all of that fun stuff. But horror fans, you'll probably wanna check that out before you hear my opinion on it. And if you're not a major horror head, you might wanna wait for my opinion because I'm sure to give it unless it's just terrible. And then the 27th, the big one of the month, Altered Carbon Season 2. This is one of my favorite Netflix original shows. There certainly was from last year. As of right now, there's no footage for the show, but here's some of what last season looked like. If you didn't watch it, I highly recommend it. It's a great cyberpunk series. In fact, watching Blade Runner early in the month would be a great prepper for Altered Carbon and maybe even re-watching season one because there was so much going on, I'm at least going to have to watch a recap. But I think the cast is great, the sets are great, the, the colors and just the, the story's wild. I really enjoyed it. Cannot wait to see what they do with season two. And they're also adding the Angry Birds movie too. Uh, not necessarily something I'm interested in, but at least something decent to watch with the kids or family at some point during the month. The 28th actually brings some Jeopardy collections. There's an Alex Trebek collection. There's some collections from like famous contestants. If you're a fan of Jeopardy and again, you cut that cord a while ago and you didn't put the rabbit ears on to get Jeopardy, uh, there's going to be uh, pretty extensive collections getting added at the end of February. And then on the 29th, Jerry Maguire and full confession here, Jerry Maguire is one of those movies that it seems like everybody has seen that I have just never seen. I don't know why. It's just never been presented to me. I've never sought out seeing it. I was too young when it came out and have just never like bothered to sit down and watch Jerry Maguire. So while I probably won't be doing it in February, I'm sure I'll do it in March since it gets added at the end of the month. But that is it for everything I think you should be paying attention to in the month of February with the exception of the stuff that's leaving in February. 
Here is the list and the date that they are scheduled to leave. If you see anything here that you want to see, pay attention to the date. Keep in mind that is the date it's leaving, not the last day you can see it. The last day you could see it obviously would be the day before the day that I have listed here. Let's also take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters. They're keeping the lights on, but I will keep making videos like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this one, and you will see me on the next one. We know, we know. All the car chases, all the sex we don't want to have with women, but we have to yeah. all do to what you guys do. And we do it again and again. Hey, 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 hey. If I want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm up your ass and work your mouth like a puppy. Peace out.